I don't want a baby with an old woman. When I told my husband I was pregnant, he yelled at me and slammed his fist against the table. That's gross. Go and get an abortion. You are making enough money to easily pay for it. His face looked like the devil. My mind went blank, and I barely managed to form words in shock. But you're the one who didn't use birth control even though I told you so. Besides, I thought you'd be happy even though it's an unexpected baby. We are married after all. Huh? Are you kidding me? What nonsense are you talking about? I mean, you're over 40. You're crazy to have a baby and try to raise it now. Can't you even think about your own physical strength? Besides, you have the important job of taking care of me, don't you? I feel sick now. I'm going out. He brushed back his long blonde hair and walked out of the room. I knew where he was going. He would probably go and play poker or pool. He would lose big as usual and beg me for more money. I thought about what I was going to do. I couldn't think of not having this baby. I knelt on the spot, hugged my stomach, and cried out loud. My name is Claudia. For over 10 years since I entered the workforce, I have lived almost exclusively for the job. Thanks to that, I have been able to build a good career and earn enough money to live on my own with a little luxury. While I was hoping to get married and have children one day, I passed the socially appropriate age to do either. I half gave up thinking that I would probably be alone for the rest of my life. The turning point came when I turned 40. I happened to visit the wine bar where Jackson was working part time. We hit it off over drinks. Although he was a little careless, he was younger than me, and his friendly smile looked cute. So we started dating. It was fun at first. He was a good cook and served me dinner every night when I came home tired. Although I never thought I would be with that type of man, it was enjoyable in its own way. Eventually, he moved in with me, and we happened to get married. Although I questioned if it was the right thing to do, I also felt that if I missed the chance, I might have never gotten married. That was the beginning of my mistake. After the marriage, he quit his job and hardly ever cooked for me. He spent all day long either playing games on his phone or playing poor girl pool at a bar. Sometimes he helped out at the friend's bar, but the money he earned went to gambling. Also, his verbal abuse toward me started. He clicked his tongue at me over trivial things and criticized me often. However, he still demanded to make love to me, which escalated with time. We don't need rubber, do we? Let's use it just in case. You can't get pregnant anymore, can you? It feels better without it, you know? After that day, we started doing it without using contraception. I knew it wasn't right. But I was tied up with the thought that I had finally gotten married and needed to put up with it a little. One day, while leading such a life, I found out I was pregnant. I was surprised that a natural conception was possible at my age, and happiness overwhelmed me. I was sure that Jackson was going to take that opportunity to be better. I often heard that having a child repaired a couple's marriage. We could have changed our course in the right direction too. Thinking positively, I hurried home and announced the news to him. But, hey babe, listen, I'm three months pregnant. Whatever, I'm going to order a delivery. Give me your credit card. Hey, seriously, listen to me. I went to the OBGYN today, and the doctor said, Congratulations. I was shocked, but I'm happy. He looked at me with his eyes wide open. He stared at me in disbelief. You are serious? I told you so. I have some money saved up 
and I'm thinking of taking a break for a few years. I have been working all this time, so I thought it would be a good idea. I want to be around the baby as much as possible. He slammed the table hard. I was so startled that I lost my voice. He slowly looked up with a face I had never seen before. I don't want an old hag's kid. That's disgusting. Get rid of it. You're making enough money to easily pay that much. His face looked like the devil as he yelled at me with a smirk. I thought he would be happy to hear the news, even though it wasn't an unexpected one. My mind went blank. While I couldn't say anything back to him, he added another blow. You're out of your mind to have a baby over 40. Think about your own physical strength. Besides, you have the important job of taking care of me. What the hell? You're the one who refused to use a condom. Darn it. I never thought an old woman could get knocked up. I feel sick now. I'm going out. He pushed his long blonde hair back and left the room with obvious annoyance. I knew where he was going. It was either poker or pool at the bar. He was going to lose big, as usual, and was going to beg me for more money with a foolish smile. I knelt and hugged my stomach. For the sake of my baby, I had to be strong. I had no intention to raise my child with him at that point. I packed my belongings in a hurry and left home. Three years later, Honey, are you sure he's not too heavy? I'm fine. My child in Dean's arms was slumbering peacefully. I met Dean after Tim was born. Like me, he was passionate about his work and had worked his way up to a senior executive position through his diligent attitude. He accepted my work and my child, and we got married in the spring. He also readily agreed to my long fraternity leave and loved him even more than I did. That day, we were inspecting the wedding venue. I thought that after everything that had happened, I was finally going to have a happy marriage. Then, I stepped into the wedding hall and saw a familiar blonde figure. No, Jackson? What's wrong, huh? You look pale. I'm fine, let's go. I was hoping that he would not notice me as I walked through the hall. I glanced at Jackson and saw a woman younger than me, dressed in a designer brand clothes next to him. As I was thinking, he had not given up on the gigolo life. His eyes and mind locked. His expression turned into a disgusting smile, as if he had found his prey. The smile that I had thought was cute when I first met him was now giving me trepidation. Hey you, Claudia, right? I'm willing to interact. I pulled on Dean's sleeve and tried to move forward. Jackson advanced toward us without care and whispered in a voice that only we could hear. With a sarcastic smile on his face, he said, What a perfect couple. An old man is an ideal partner for an old woman. I feel sorry for the kid with such an old dad. Why don't you just put him in a facility already? Babe, the reception is done. We have to go. Oh, sorry, Kathy. He instantly changed the tone of his voice. It was obvious that he was a parasite on the woman. When Kathy walked past us, her whole body smelled of perfume and she looked me up and down. Then, her expression changed to a surprise when she saw Dean standing beside me. As I was wondering why, Jackson walked past me and whispered in my ear, It's not a wedding venue, but a nursing home would suit you guys better. You see, Kathy is surprised too. You've got plenty of money, so why don't you just go there? I wanted to fight back, but my old memories came back to me, and I froze. I couldn't understand why I had to be attacked like that by him. He was just a scumbag who couldn't do anything on his own. 
Dean put his arm around my shoulder to comfort me. His warmth and Tim's sleeping face almost made me cry. I'm sorry for making you feel bad. I told you before, he's Tim's father. Don't say more and don't worry about it. You didn't do anything wrong. But he somehow had a mischievous smile on his face and confidently said, I have a good idea. Will you leave it to me? On our wedding day, Dee and I placed our future to each other in front of the many guests. Tim was watching me and smiling next to my parents. When I secretly waved my hand, he did the same with a small hand. You look beautiful, honey. Thank you. I had lived my life only for work and had been pushed around by the scumbag. I was finally getting through happiness. Just before the kiss, the door to the chapel was violently swung open. Claudia, I know you are in there. Come out! The one who pushed away the stuff and burst inside was disheveled Jackson. His blonde hair, which he had been religiously bleaching, was more than half brown, and his clothes were in tatters. There was a good distance between us, but I could smell the alcohol on him. I panicked, thinking he was trying to ruin even my wedding, and shouted at him, What are you doing here? You ruined my happiness. Go to hell, you old hag. What are you talking about? Honey, let me talk. Dean stepped forward and stared at Jackson, who seemed to be intimidated by his imposing posture. He took a step back with an awkward look on his face. You brought this on yourself, Jackson. Dean's explanation went like this. The company he worked for was a partner of the company Kathy Ran. They had exchanged business cards once at a business event, and he remembered her. That was the reason why she looked so surprised at the time. He then contacted her to let her know Jackson's true identity. He played her the audio of Jackson's rant that I had recorded a long time ago. Sorry, can I borrow $100? I will pay you back triple, okay? You old hag is only good at making money, so make more. When she heard that, she was furious. She prioritized her business over Gigolo and kicked him out immediately. That's too bad. Hey, you old hag, this is all your fault. You better fix it. At that time, I heard something snap inside me. You are pathetic. Jackson apparently not expecting me to retort, wobbled backward in surprise. I yanked up the hem of my dress and walked up to him and yelled, I'm going to give you what you have been doing to me all this time. If you think I'm going to be scared of you forever, you are wrong. You should be ashamed of yourself. You call me a hag, but what about yourself? For someone your age, you keep relying on others. Grow up! The place was quiet for a moment, but the guests immediately started applauding. It spread rapidly and became a tremendous sound. While Jackson was recalling from the scene, the police grabbed him by the arm and took him away. He seemed to have no intention of resisting and was being taken quietly. His filthy back was so small that I felt sorry for him. It was all over then. A weight had finally been lifted from my shoulders. Sometime later, I'm visiting Jackson's parents with Tim. They are not to blame, so I bring him to see his grandparents once a month. Unlike Jackson, they are sweet to us. How could a person like Jackson come out from them? It is a mystery to me. Or is it because they are too sweet to him that he became such a monster? I have no way of knowing now. My ex-mother-in-law quietly starts speaking. Jackson came here the other day. Oh, was everything okay? We told him we couldn't take care of him anymore and kicked him out. He's living a solitary life without a home or work now. He had quit his job and had been hanging around since he got engaged to Kathy. 
he thought that if he got married, he wouldn't have to worry about money, so he took out a loan to buy a luxury car. He is now chased by those debts as well. The lack of planning is quite disconcerting, but that's how he is. And the fiasco at your wedding was broadcasted on the local news, you know? All right. One of the guests that day had taken a video with his phone, and it became vital on social media. As a result, it ended up on the local network. Although our faces were hidden, Jackson's face was clearly visible. He said that because of this, he's struggling to even find a part time job. After what happened, I'm really grateful to you for bringing Tim to see us. He loves visiting you guys, and we thank you too. Are you still working? I'm on a break right now. I'm going to take a little longer and prioritize my life with my boy. My current husband adores him, and we are very happy. Right, Tim? I smile at him, and his eyes twinkle in return. His happy face blows away all the bad memories of my past. <laughs>